property taxes. Now remember, there's a lot to these and there's a lot of different aspects to property taxes, but a quick overview of essentially where your tax rate comes from, where that final assessment comes from. So remember, we take the value, and this past year was a property value update year, so your values have all changed. Most values in the property, most properties in the county have moved about 30% or so up in value. So what that means is essentially that values are more, prop, uh, more valuable, uh, properties are more able to be sold for higher amounts, roughly about 30%. So what we do then is essentially um, we'll take your value. Now remember that uh, about 90% or so of the levies on your ballot, of the levies on your tax distribution, are actually what's called a fixed sum levy. Now fixed sum means that this marker doesn't work, but fixed sum means that the same revenue year over year over year comes in for the local entities. So it's the same money. And so what we do then is with higher values, we'll actually, as values go up, we'll actually decrease most of the tax rates in the county. So to bring in the same amount of revenue for all of those levies. So you think of it kind of as if you make more money, but you still pay the same amount of income tax, that means that the income tax was decreased to offset you making more money. So that's about 90% of your levies. So this is why we always say that value increase does not equal tax increase because most of your levies will actually decrease in the effective tax rate. So that does not always happen though. That's not always the case because there's the other about 10% or so of levies. So the three examples of why those might not decrease, your tax rate might not decrease as your value increases, one are bonds and uh, general revenue um, uh, levies. So those are things like fire trucks, things like school buildings. Those are things like um, any, any type of levy that essentially generates a total amount over the life of the levy, emergency levies for schools, that we will decrease uh, ourselves through the budget commission. It doesn't automatically get decreased with effective rates, but we'll look at that and essentially make sure that over the life of the, of the levy, that levy does not generate more than what the voters had approved. But typically, the rates will stay constant. So essentially, this means that your rate will stay, um, tax rate stays the same, stays the same, and your taxes will typically then increase as values increase to get that overall end number of revenue by the end of the levy. Now, other examples though of why we may not decrease the tax rate as values increase would be something called inside millage. And inside millage is essentially unvoted taxes on your property. All properties in the state of Ohio have 10 mills. And remember a mill is $1 per thousand dollars of value. So essentially it's $10 per thousand dollars of your value. So $10 per thousand of your value moves with wherever your value goes. We don't decrease the tax rate when your value increases. We apply these 10 mills, $10 per thousand dollars of your value, directly onto your value. That gets split up between all the different local entities. So the school, a little bit goes to the county, your township, your city, um, park system, first responders. It gets all split up for inside millage. And that's $10 per thousand dollars of your property values applied directly to your value. So when your value goes up then, your inside millage portion goes up as well. And then the last example of why when values increase, your tax rate may stay the same or may not decrease as much is something called the 20 mil floor. And what that means is essentially every school district in the state of Ohio is guaranteed at least 20 mils worth of revenue. Now remember I said as values increase, we decrease the tax rate. And so that's called the effective tax rate that's applied onto your property. 
Over the years, as more values increase, no new levies are added, that effective rate becomes lower and lower to get in the same amount of revenue. Well, but in the state of Ohio, schools are guaranteed 20 mils even as we continue to decrease the tax rate because voters haven't approved new levies. So with that 20 mil guarantee, all seven of our school districts here in Ashtabula County are below that 20 mil guarantee. And so what we then have to do is, depending on how far below they are of that 20 mil guarantee, we essentially add millage, add tax rate to your property to get them up to 20 mils. And so that's applied directly to your value as well. And what that means is that as your values increase, the tax rate for schools will decrease because all their levies, most of their levies will bring in the same amount of revenue. But then we take a step back and we say overall, how many mills are going to schools? If it's below 20, then we have to apply extra mills, extra tax rates to your property in order to get them to 20 mills worth of revenue. And so those three reasons are why even if your value increases, your taxes may increase as well, despite the fact that your actual tax rate goes down tremendously. In some parts of our county with these higher values, we're actually seeing 10 mils less in, in tax rate. That means you're actually being, your tax rate is much lower than what it was last year, the year before, but your value is higher. And so for some people, they're paying about the same next year. For other people, they're paying much higher next year. It depends on where you are in terms of your school district, where you are in terms of some of the bonds and some of the, the other levies that are applied directly to your value. So we're always happy to answer questions. You can look at our website to see more too. Your tax distribution on our website is a really good tool for you to use to see the full breakout of where you're actually spending all of these uh, dollars.